Although I've featured Wago or Vago connectors in the past, I've never actually made a video where I took a connector itself apart. Let me demonstrate a Vago connector. This is a common connector. It's a five-way common connector. You lift the little lid up of that uh, terminal position, you stick a wire in, you close it, the wire is now connected. And it's uh, if you add more wires, they'll just be commoned along. If you want to get it back out again, you lift it up and you remove the wire and that's it. It's very, very good. Um, I got some of the original Wigo terminals, the real thing, and I got some of the clones and I thought they were going to be identical. I just thought the clone was going to be a complete ripoff of the Wigo, but the way it operates is completely different. I mean, it's the same principle of a spring. Oh, let me just cut to the chase and show you. Right, tell you what. Here is the Wigo terminal. So this five-way Wigo terminal has five little levers. It's got a commoning bus bar. That's just a three-way one. Uh, I folded these back just to show what they look like because uh, otherwise they'd be sticking straight up and you wouldn't really see. But this is a copper bus bar here. It's also looking a bit scuffed because I scuffed it with a file to check if it was copper or not. It is copper. And then it's got these spring steel springs, but it's basically one of these spring steel spring steel springs for each of these positions and having taken this three-way one apart where is the three-way one which i've now lost i could not get it back together again it's to actually manufacture these they have to hook this little lip under the common bus bar um, while it's under tension i just could not get it back together the same cannot be said of the clone let me show you the clone Here's the clone in various stages of operation. Let's zoom down it. So here it is closed. Here it is open, where the little uh, lever here just pushes that spring down. The wire is pushed in, it's released, and it clamps up. Here's the little lever with a gap underneath it to allow the cable to go through. There is the, what, well, that's actually two contacts. This is a two-way strip. Uh, and they're both connected together. This is the main difference, well, between the clone and the original Wago terminal. There's the little bus bar. It's also copper. That It's all looking scuffed because, again, I took it apart. And that's what it looks like inside with the spring pushing up against the wire. Now let me show you a little graphical representation, which will make this easier. And then I'll show you how easy it is to put the clone back together again. Unlike the original Wago, the clone is a nice design, I have to say. So here is the clone. It has a little copper plate here and the spring is actually hooked underneath at this end where it comes down. Let me see if I can find that one. Here it is. Here's the little plate. It's very, very tiny. <laughs> I just dropped it. It's very tiny. Um, and when you actually pull the lever over, it actually impinges down and it actually pushes the spring down. You put the wire in and then when you release it, it pushes up against this copper plate. It pushes it up roughly central, but it also bites into the copper a little bit so that if you try and pull the wire out, it's going to sort of bite into it and it's going to act as a bit of strain relief to a degree, but it's not designed to be strain relief. It is purely just to grip it and stop it popping out accidentally. The copper plate, and this is where it gets a bit tricky because it's four millimeter wide uh, and about 0.5 millimeter thick. Uh, but because of the complex shape of this, you could also count this as part of the bus bar down here because it does join. So effectively, it's a little bit more than four millimeter wide. And this is important because the Waco uh, original was five millimeter, but this is most of the way there, but not quite as generously rated as the Vago. Let's take a look at the uh, re original. So keep in mind, 0.35 millimeter spring steel and half millimeter thick copper. Strangely enough, the Vago is also 0.35 millimeter spring steel and also 0.5 millimeter thick copper, but it's got this big bus bar. But instead of being at the top and actually pulling the uh, wire to the top of the connector, so in the case of these ones, uh, it actually physically clamps up to the top. With the original Wago, it clamps it down to the bottom of the connector, so they're very different in that sense, even though the technology is roughly the same. In this case, when you hinge the lever up, uh, there's a sort of like a rotating... 
I guess pivot pin, but it basically it's just held in place by the spring. It's not it's not like an actual pivot with sort of pins through it or anything like that. It's just basically well there it is. It's a a little curved bit that just rides up and down on the plastic. And it's got a cantilever inside that as well as letting the wire through, it cantilevers up against the spring and it pushes it up when you lever it up to actually let you put the wire in. And when you put it back, it just clamps down again. Um, and that is more or less it. I think the clone has been engineered to be cheaper and easier to make. Certainly, if I get the bits of the clone, let's get some bits of the clone here. So there is the bus bar. I'll zoom down this. And I shall also focus up to about there. That's probably better. Let's see if I can do what I used to do and just go completely out of focus. So having faffed around for ages with the very frustrating Wago terminal, here is the equivalent with the clone. So it's got the springy metal, hooks in, and you press it down and it kind of slips in like that. Then... You get the little back plate and it slots in like that. Then you get the housing and you put the little levers in like that. And this is where it's very, very different to the Wigo. You then take this and then you just basically slide it on and click it together and that's it back together and 100% functional. The Wago, I just gave up trying to put it together. The clone is designed for just mass production with all those springy terminals all on the one housing and the way they clamp into the actual copper bus bar is very clever, I have to say. So they are both copper. This is good. Um, I was expecting, well, I, here's the problem. If I was doing a commercial installation, I would only use Wigo terminals because uh, I wouldn't use any of the clones because you just don't know what you're getting. But for personal projects, I would actually use the clones. But if I got a bag of these, one of the first things I'd do is open them up and I'd take the little bus bar out and I would uh, file it and just see if it was copper or not, as I did to this one. And it is copper, well, copper coloured. It looks like tin copper. But one day, it's inevitable, these are going to come out with steel bus bars or aluminium bus bars. They're going to skimp, they're going to cheap out, they're going to use some other metal. And uh, that is going to potentially mean that the cheapy connectors are going to burn up. Now, the reason there's a muret, a wire nut, a screw it, loads of different terminology. Canada, muret, America, wire nut. Britain used to call these screw it's and they used to be ceramic. We don't really use these in the UK. But the reason I get these in the turn block is that there are videos on the internet showing people wiring a continuous loop of wire that goes through a bit of turn block and then through a wire nut and then through a Wago terminal. And then they keep increasing the current uh, to see at wh which one gives first. And uh, the one that gives first is the Wago. But I want to point out that uh, the current that they go up to before that literally blows like a fuse. This little plate in here, this five millimeter wide, half millimeter plate blows like a fuse at over 100 amps. So that's, I think you've got a lot more to worry about if you're running over 100 amps through a wire like this in your house. If anything, the Wago actually blowing open circuit could save your house going on fire, but that's not any formal form protection. Other things, uh, they did pool tests on them. I think, uh, who did pool tests? I think it was uh, Great Scott did a pool test on to see about the strength of what it took to pull the wire out. But again, in most instances, you're just, you you don't, all you want is to hold it snugly and you're not really expected to take a, a lot of strain. So I do like these terminals. Um, the first time I came across them was, was at Hussman. Uh, I was installing a, outdoor condenser for a supermarket and uh, it was the terminals that you actually put a screwdriver in, you lever it up and you poke the wire in and it was the first time I'd come across them in the control panel and I was a bit concerned about the reliability. So next time I was in the workshop I asked the maintenance department, I said, 
you know, have you had any problems with these Wago terminals? And they said, no, we've never, ever had a problem with those terminals, which is good. Uh, fast forward, um, working at Disney, and uh, the electricians that were doing the sort of general public area lighting for the rides, uh, they were all using the push-in Wago terminals for all the wiring because they they just really are popular in Europe. And then fast forward again, they come out with these ones with the earlier version of this with the big lift-up lever and then the super compact one lift-up lever. And I have to say that I think this is a good advancement. This is the correct way to go with electrical wiring. So that's what they're like inside. Um, once again, just like their other connectors with the bigger lift-up levers, uh, the clone is actually an evolution. I think it's a better design just in terms of the number of components and ease of manufacturing. It's bigger and chunkier. Look, at there's a significant size difference. Uh, not massively significant, but noticeable. But the reward for that is just the, the much greater simplicity. So that's it. Even like this, the way the pin, when you rock it, it just basically just finds a center point of the contact it's sliding and then it just clicks over the midpoint and holds up. It's a very clever design. So that is it. Uh, Wago terminals. Uh, if you want to use them for professional applications, only use branded ones. It covers you for any eventualities of, of things happening. But for personal use, uh, just wiring up your own little projects and things like that, you know, these ones are much better than expected. They're actually reasonably good.